Hello and welcome to the uh, Might and Alliance for Growth and Learning, our Magal Matzo Workshop. As uh, many of you are aware, we are undergoing some uh, rather unusual circumstances with our uh, response for the COVID-19 virus. That means that we are taking special precautions, uh, meaning that we can't be together. However, that's no reason why we can't make a little matzo together. Now, normally you would go and buy matzo in the shop and hopefully wherever you are, matzo is still plentiful and a wonderful food to have on store. However, long before the name Manischewitz was ever heard or even Streis or any of the other manufacturers that we now rely upon for our matzo, people were making matzo by themselves. Matzo was something that you would make each day for your home and the recipe could not be simpler. The uh, main ingredients that you need from the modern sense is all-purpose flour, water, and a little bit of salt. You can salt to taste. Now I'm making a very, very small batch, just enough for sort of one person for a meal. Uh, this will scale up. What you are looking for is a ratio to start with of about three parts flour to one part water. That's a three to one ratio. Uh, that will give you about the right consistency to start with. You may want to add a little extra water, add a little extra flour. What you're going to be hoping to find is a nice ball of dough that sticks together, but is still fairly dry. You do not want something that is goopy or sticky or runny. My oven has been preheated to 550 degrees, which is about as high as it will go. The higher your oven goes, the better. If you happen to have a, uh, a baking steel, even better. Make sure it's kosher for Passover. Uh, if you have a baking stone, chances are you've been using it throughout the year. And baking stones, as they are made out of ceramic, are not something that you can make kosher for Passover. If you have a brand new baking stone just for Passover, well, then I guess this is your lucky chance to use it. Uh, I should point out that if you were going to make matzah for yourself for the holiday of Pesach, then you would need to make sure your oven, your utensils, and everything you're working with is already kosher for Passover. You would have to start there first, and then anything you make would be fine for the holiday. What we're making today is uh, not kosher for Passover because I have not koshered my oven a week early, uh, and everything else in the house is still uh, full of chametz. So this will be matzah that would be good enough for Pesach, Pesach if everything had already been set up properly. All right, the timer was set to 18 minutes. 18 minutes is the time it would take somebody to walk a meal in the ancient world, which is how long you have between the flour and the water touching until the matzah needs to be in the oven. I've got my baking tray in there preheating. The hotter it gets, the browner your matzah will turn out. If you don't preheat it, you'll end up with a bit floppy matzah, uh, and you'll have to wait a little bit longer for it to cook all the way through. So let's get mixing. Uh, I'm starting off with uh, 60 milliliters of, uh, of flour and I'm going to be adding uh, about 20 milliliters of water. Like I said, once I get it in here, I'm going to be checking the consistency to make sure it's giving me a nice dry dough. Flour, salt to taste. I'm using about an eighth of a teaspoon, but like I said, I, everybody gets their own taste in salt. I happen to like salt. In modern manufacturing facilities, they will have special access to water uh, that has been kept very clean here. They've also got special access to flour. Uh, these are things that, uh, that's been guarded. These are things that you don't normally find throughout our history. They are luxuries of the modern world and we're lucky to have them, but they are not strictly speaking necessary, especially not if you are having to choose between making matzah and not making, not having matzah for the holiday. Oops, I think I just overdid the water a little bit. Like I said, this is not an exact science, but I'm going to add a little extra flour, try and balance that out. Let's see if we can't get a bowl. Still a little stickier, just on some of the pieces that I want. So we're going to 
put the rest of that like there in my hands and just roll it together. Yeah, I really overdid my bonus water there. See, this is the uh, the trick, is especially when you're making a small batch like this, the difference between just the right amount and too much of either the water or the flour can be very, very tricky. There we go. Now my ball of dough is just the way I want. Fingers, on the other hand, are covered in goo. That's okay, because I'm not going to put my fingers on the baking tray. Give it a few minutes to roll. Oh, see, it's picking up a little extra, so we need to just get a little more flour on it. Still have plenty of time on our timer. All right, so now just go ahead and almost imagine that you were making a pizza. You're going to spread it out. If you find that it's still a little sticky, that's perfectly fine. Let me just get rid of these extra bits on my hand. Just put a little extra flour in. All right, this is not French pastry cooking. This is not the Great British Bake Off. This is the bread of affliction. Lechem Oni. And that means you can cook it in a rough and ready fashion. Now lots of people would eat matzah year round because the advantage of matzah over regular bread is you don't have to wait. In fact, this should be done for me in about 10 minutes. Once I put it in the oven, I'll keep an eye on it, but it should only take about three minutes aside before it's done. And I'll poke it with a fork just to make sure that as it heats, you don't get any air bubbles. Let's go ahead and try and do that on the other side now that I've made a complete mess of this. My practice one was much better. Absolutely being a complete pain for me. All right, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so from the moment we started until now, it's been about, it's been about 10 minutes or so. Um, that's how fast it goes. Now I flipped it during the middle. Uh, keep an eye on it from time to time. Make sure, depending upon how thick or thin it is, that it's not getting too brown or too crusty. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and see what we've got. Looking just about right. Do remember to be very, very careful throughout all of this. The oven is probably a lot hotter than you're used to. Uh, this was cooked at 550 degrees. And uh, as you can see, We've got a lovely browning going all around. Uh, it's not the best shape in the world, but this is homemade. Uh, now, let's see if this is probably too hot to touch easily, but I'm gonna show you that we've got a lovely crack that happens there. Uh, if I can do that without burning myself to pieces, actually, borrow the cloth. It is extremely hot. 
there you go. So, lovely matzah, homemade. Got a nice little crack to it. Flakes a little bit, not quite as much as your machine-made matzah. Those go through uh, real devils of ovens. Uh, so this is going to be a little softer than you might be used to. Some people find that better. Uh, but uh, enjoy and uh, have a wonderful Pesach. If you have any questions about what you can do to actually make this kosher for Passover during the holiday, please contact me, rabbi at tiflorida.org, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Take care. Bye.